In this video, we are going to price an interest rate swap. I've already set up a spreadsheet to do this, um, so I've got the formatting right and so on, but let me give you some background here. I've got some market data in the top left corner here. These are continuously compounded zero rates. Clearly, uh, the market does not consist of continuously compounded zero rates, so these have been calculated somewhere else. Um, usually, I build a yield curve out of various things like SOFR rates, so, uh, SOFR futures, uh, SOFR rates, and so on. So that we're taking as given. We're trying price a swap. In this case, it's a four-year swap. It's got a fixed rate of 5.0162 and a notional of $100 million. Now, I've chosen my rates carefully here, so the present value of this swap should be approximately zero. It won't be exactly zero because we've got a pretty big notional here, but at least if I come out close to zero, then I know I've done something reasonably correct. The present value here is just the sum of the present values of the cash flows. I'm going to lay out the cash flows here carefully. Okay, so I've got a little section here so I can lay this out reasonably systematically. A four-year swap has four cash flows um, where we're swapping fixed versus floating. Um, let's assume here we're receiving fixed and paying floating. Obviously, we can set it up the other way around. Both the fixed rate and the floating cash flows are on an actual over 360 basis. Um, I don't have days here, so I'm just going to assume that every year has 365 days in it. Okay, so we've got four cash flows. I'll just use the sequence function here to get the numbers to show up. So we've got four cash flows. This first cash flow is going to be exchanging in one year's time the fixed rate. So notional times fixed rate times 365 over 360, the fixed cash flow, and the floating cash flow, which will be a compounded SOFA rate. So every day we're going to look at so what the SOFA fixing is. That's an overnight SOFA. We're going to compound it every day, and eventually we're going to come out with a SOFA, a compounded SOFA rate. Now, I've got another video on that. Uh, the Fed, New York Fed, helps us out here by creating an index in which um, they calculate, which you can use to calculate forward SOFRs or historical SOFRs or historical compounded SOFRs, but we're just going to calculate implied forward SOFR rates. Okay, to do that, I'm going to use discount factors. It's just my uh, usual way of working. So I'm going to start, the, the starting discount factor is going to be the discount factor to the beginning of the period, zero years, one year, two year, three years, the end one is going to be the end of the period, one year, two year, three year, four year. So we're going to start by calculating the end ones. So that's E to the minus, again, I've got continuously compounded rates, so minus RT. And the start discount factor is going to be, the first one's one, because that's immediately the discount, the present value of a dollar is one, if the dollar is being paid today, is one. And then the ending one, the, the all right, let me say it again. The starting ones are the same as the ending ones for years two, three, four, right? So this is a discount factor starting at year zero, going to year one, starting year one, going to year two, year two to year three, and so on. All right, my forward SOFRs, these are compounded SOFR rates. So this is going to be the SOFR rate, which is valid between the start, in this case zero, and the end one. So how do we do that? We calculate that. We know that's going to be the same as the rate, which gives us the ratio of the discount factors. So I'm going to back this out. This is some interest rate math if you're interested. So we're going to do the ratio of the discount factors minus one times and then we have to do 360 divided by 365. So 360 is the um, basis, and 365 is the number of days. And we're going to get a series of forward SOFR rates. Again, there's another video on how to calculate these things and so on. So those are my forward SOFR rates. Now I want to find my fixed cash flows. So the fixed cash flows are going to be the notional, lock the reference, times the fixed rate, lock the reference, 
times the number of days. Again, we're assuming 365 divided by the basis 360. So let's copy that down. Okay, so the fixed cash flows are always the same. I'm going to calculate, again, we're receiving the fix, we're going to pay floating. I'm going to calculate everything as positive numbers here, and then we'll take the difference for the net. So the floating cash flow is the notional times our expected forward SOFR rate times 365 divided by 360. Again, an actual over 360 basis. And as you can see, and again, if we look at our rates, our rates are falling over time which means the forward SOFRs are getting smaller over time, which means the floating cash flows are getting smaller over time. We start out with a larger cash flow, net cash flow. We're pay, what do we say? Receiving fixed, paying floating. So we're gonna lose, we're gonna pay out some money here, but we're gonna receive some of it back here. So let's receive fixed, pay floating. Take the present value of these, we're getting these cash flows, these net cash flows are going to be exchanged at the end of the period, so we're going to multiply that by the discount factor at the end. So the present value is the product of the net cash flow times the end discount factor. And you can see, again, the present value of that first cash flow is a big negative number. Second one's getting closer to zero. The next two are positive numbers. Net, the value of this swap is $169, which on a notional of $100 million is pretty close to zero. So I was pretty close on the fixed rate, the fair fixed rate here. Hope that's helpful. Um, I know I've glossed over the detail of these forward SOFA rates, but that is a subject of another video.